The Atlanta Braves currently hold a wild card spot, which is honestly pretty impressive as they can't really have any beginning of a chance to compete at the level of their talents as they're capable of because of the litany of unfortunate events they've had to power through. So with that said, let's delve into it. Atlanta came into this season with an expected win total of 98, coupled with an insane 25% chance to win the World Series. They had won six straight and at least division titles, fully anticipating seventh, especially with the offseason addition of Chris Sale after acquiring the trade with the Boston Red Sox. Their lineup on paper was as formidable as any, throwing on recruiting junior leadoff hole as their inning MVP, Matt Olson coming off a 54 homer, 132. RBI campaign and of course stalwart third baseman Austin Riley coming off an insane 861 OPS Silver Slugger season. And as it pertains to the rotation, they're spearheaded by young stud and Spencer Strider and of course Max Fried who's in a walk here, one of the best one-two punches in all the ball in my opinion, right there with the Dodgers in the NL, the Yamamoto and Tyler Glaston and of course Philly with Aaron Nola and Ranger Suarez. And even as much as bullpens fluctuate season to season no matter the team, they employed one of the steadiest in all the ball in Rossell and Glacius, so they seemingly had zero weaknesses coming into the season. And they showed that from jump as they cruised to an 18 and 6 start, which was the best mark in all the ball for clipping the Guardians with the second best record at that time, 6 to 2. And they played this well even despite losing their Cy Young candidate, alluded to 25 year old Spencer Strider, for the season because of an elbow injury. Don't blame me, love made me crazy If it doesn't, you ain't doing it right The lineup was as prolific as any, which propelled them here With three of the starting nine having an OPS eclipsing 900 With Marcelo Zuni in particular having an MVP caliber month With a 344 average, 31 RBIs and an OPS over 1100 Man, but they followed it up by going just 8-7 and seven Over their next 15 games, which is ostensibly a precursor of things to come as they win 9-17 and 17 the next month, which brought their overall record to 35-30, and 30, which is good only for a wildcard spot as the Phillies were 10 games up on them in the NL East. And the biggest loss wasn't even on the scoreboard during that time, as they lost Ronald Acuna Jr. to a torn ACL on May 26th down in Pittsburgh. An absolute staggering flip, giving out the season again and then put us behind the swoon was the bats. As other than Marcelo Zuna, the offense was completely impotent, just completely listless. And with the loss of Acuna, their offense was obviously even in more dire straits, especially in the outfield as they needed to thrust off-season trade acquisition from the Mariners, Jared Kalanick, and the starting nine to replace my guy. And Austin Riley, their prized third baseman, is having an absolute miserable campaign thus far, with a 295 on base percentage and a putrid 633 OPS. Matt Olson also had yet to find a swing with only 10 homers and a 244 average. But they bounced back nicely as the roller coaster continued as they rattled off 9 W's their next 12 and then but it's behind this for them was a rotation. They were absolutely shoving, spirited by two off-season acquisitions and were generated and revitalized Chris Sale and Ronaldo Lopez who they picked up from the White Sox in the off-season. By the way, Lopez led the NL with a sub-2 ERA at an insane 1.71 at that time. Uh -huh. Pretty sure the White Sox could have used my man, no? Nah? The problem for the Braves, however, was even during this stretch, they only gained two games in the division because Phillies obviously were one of the best teams in all of ball and at that time, at 53-27, and 27, did have the best record in all of ball and Bryce Harper was absolutely on a tear who led the offense with an OPS of over 955 and Ranger Suarez led the NL with the 1.81 run on average. So at the trade deadline, just about a month ago, it was the thought of many that they needed to really go on a tear and close in the gap to give GM Alex Andopoulos a reason and the latitude to go in the market and go big fish hunting, especially given the fact that they lost their ace and MVP for the season. So it made sense for he and the Braves to be reticent to plunge and relent on their big prospects given they weren't even close to full strength and they wouldn't be this entire season even in the playoffs. So with that said it was a relatively easy decision for Alex not to be heavy buyers as Atlanta went 15 and 16 up until the trade deadline. Well they also spliced in there a six game losing streak against teams they're contending with in the National League in St. Louis, Cincinnati and New York as they just couldn't do anything right losing games by relenting the long ball, lacking the long ball and just abysmal defense. So the only trade of significance Alex pulled the trigger on 
was bringing back 2021 World Series MVP Jorge Soler. And with the amount of injuries they've been dealt with, not only by quantity but quality as I mentioned in Acuna, Spencer Strider, but also catcher Sean Murphy for a month and now all the Albies for 8-12 to 12 weeks, they just have not been given a chance this entire season to put their best team on the field and it's my opinion the Braves front offers are just more focused on next season amid this slide. And I don't think, candidly, you can even begrudge them. They just have been derailed, not even given a chance. And even if they sneak in, which I would give all the props to, all the platitudes to, there's just no way you can anticipate this version of the Atlanta Braves to go on a run. Now since then, Atlanta has since continued to play mediocre baseball as they've oh so slightly been holding on to that final walkout spot for the majority of the second half ahead of teams like the Mets and the Giants. Now listen, Braves culture may rule the day, they may get into October, but there's no reason, no reason at all, you think they could do any damage. And it's just unfortunate they've been derailed unlike any other team this season. Alright, what do y'all think? Will the Braves make any noise? Will they even make the playoffs? As always, thanks for watching, and if you did enjoy, please consider subscribing, and peace out.